Hey Space Watchers and welcome back here from Paris from the seventh summit of space sustainability and I have now the great honor to speak to one of the long-term friends in the industry to Ralph Dinsley who is the director at Exo Analytics now in the UK, if I'm not mistaken. That is correct. Exo um, acquired 3S Northumbria, which is yeah, our like trading name, but uh, we are part of the Exo family. Tell our audience in brief words what Exo Analytics is doing. Oh, very brief words is a tough one. I mean, for the space community, the key point is we have the, the uh, world premier eyes on the skies for tracking all objects above 8,000 kilometers uh, out to uh, geostationary orbit and, and beyond, obviously, with graveyard and obviously doing some cislunar work as well. Um, obviously, there's a lot of things tied up within um, US defense that our main company work on, but um, 3S Northumbria in the UK are doing a lot of simulation and modeling, supporting sustainable ideas for space operations. You mentioned just sustainable ideas, so it, it's a sustainability summit here and you're active in this community for, for quite some time. So what is the important topic or issue to be here these days? Uh, for me, it's in some ways maybe a, a reflection on, on how the system is working. I mean, a lot of, we've got to look forward, we've got to look ahead, but we, we still haven't got the present correct. Yeah. There's still a lot of information that's missing, um, a lot of objects that aren't being tracked, and that's because of the way that the current global space surveillance system is set up to support the military needs and not necessarily sustainability needs. You just said there are certain objects that are not tracked. So how can I not track something in space? How can I hide in space? How does it work? Uh, that's a very good question, actually. So where I say not tracked, they so maybe being tracked, just being ignored, or they may be kept in the catalog and just not being presented to the public, uh, or there are smaller objects that are definitely not being tracked. Let's talk about catalogs for, for a moment. I mean, Germany just announced the huge spending in space. A lot of that will be in our sensors and going then into a catalog. We have EU SST, we have a lot of governments are trying to set up their own catalogs, including private entities. So isn't that all sufficient enough? So, I mean, you have a better insight. I mean, I'm, I'm quite sure that you're operating your own catalog as well. Yes, absolutely. Um, the EXO catalog has been operated, operating since day one of the um, EXO Global Telescope Network that was set up um, 12 years ago now. Um, so they have been building their own catalogue and have only utilised the US space track, tra space track catalogue to um, correlate what they have, so to, to reinforce the information they already know and to help with IDs. So that, that enables um, the company to actually present to the public an open presentation of everything we see in space because we're not identifying things as classified satellites yeah. or whatever. So we actually have a, a, a very good picture. Um, we track something like... 600 additional objects from the Intel Sat 33 Echo event that are not appearing in the catalog. And a lot of that is because we don't have the rules and regulations that the operators for Space Track have to go through to be able to put objects into the official catalog. But I find it concerning that there are so many objects that are not in the catalog that should be in there. Where is this missing link? So wh why is that? I mean, okay, classified objects might might be one reason, but 800 or objects or 600 objects are not classified, definitely not. So, and when you talked about the space debris that are occurring from this from this uh, collision, also not classified. So the question is, where is this missing link? So why don't we do that? Is it but too much work or? Well, I think it is too much work for the actual resource that's allocated for it. Yeah. I think that's, just, that's probably just too simple an answer, but that is the simplest answer. A great example is earlier this year, Transporter 14 launched 70 objects yeah. into low Earth orbit. It was 25 days before any of those objects appeared in the catalogue. Now, I know they would have been tracked from the outset because they are a threat, and I know that the US would have been supporting any conjunction analysis that was required for, the, for those objects. But the, the wider community don't get to see them until they appear in the catalogue, unless they have their own space tracking system. And it's all down to too few people, too much work, I, I personally believe. How can we change that? Well, I mean, we are here on, on a conference where we talk about sustainability, but if we don't know what's up there, if we don't know how it's behaved, if we don't know on the day what, what is up there, then obviously this entire setting doesn't make sense anymore then it's a nice gathering but 
no action. So help me with that. The, the, the key bit has got to be to change how we do the catalogue more than anything else. How, who, who is the organisation that is there to present it, develop it and, and to promote it? Um, you know, the US military have done it um, now for decades. Yeah. Uh, but unfortunately, it's a military organisation. It's not really a military mission. Therefore, they have the resource required to do what they need to do to support their side of things. But now but, but there's nobody, tracks. Yes. No, yeah, no, nobody will track. Is, but tracks is only going to do space safety oh, it won't okay. do cataloging so okay. you know the catalog will remain in, you know quite rightly i mean the military do not want to give up this power that they Absolutely. they have so that's going to be the biggest problem but if we could create a, a genuine global organization almost an ico for space that can actually have the right resource and funds to manage the space activity if you're considering that the the nations that are involved in space spend an awful lot to get their objects into space they, you know, they should spend a little bit more to ensure the safety of them in space as well. You're wearing the British flag um, and UK is very active on the space sustainability side over, over years and admire them for, for their work. Isn't that a way in that they could lead this kind of effort? They certainly could. They would need the funding. And that's uh, obviously one of the key efforts, uh, particularly in current politics. There's lots of things to spend the money on, lots of m more important. Um, Put a military badge on it and, sh and, and you get the funding. You get the funding, but you don't get the transparency. And we need transparency. You can't have all. I know, but, uh, but you're absolutely right. If it affects the safety of yeah. the humankind, then that would get the funding as well. But again, space doesn't actually affect people's safety. Loss of space is not seen as a... Uh, as something that's risky to human life other than to the astronauts obviously i see great thank you very much it seems that there is still a lot of work uh, to do in it in it in that matter and these events like these have their importance um, in this in finding a solution absolutely and and it's great to see a gathering of such good people yeah. doing it we have to keep on talking i know we say sometimes of too much talk but we do need to convert it into action as quickly as possible absolutely vince thank you very much for for your time you're welcome good luck with, with with the next steps and with that space watch out from us here thank you